Back in 2019, I've entered my anger on tape as yet another Braun watch showcased poor misalignment issues. Not only did both of the previous watches tick well between the markers, but one of them also had an inherently flawed bracelet design that ensured it would fit nobody but giants. During the research for that video, I discovered that not all Braun watches are made equal, or made in the same place at least. While many of the cheaper models are made in China with questionable levels of quality control, it turns out that some of their more iconic models are still made in Germany. Therefore, I figured I'd give this company a second chance. I headed online, picked out the one that took my fancy. Amazon covered the cost of the watch for a review, so thanks to them. It's linked in the description if you want to try one out. Before we get into this one, yes, I am pronouncing it Braun because that's how it's marketed in the UK at least. At Braun, we thought about shaving so you could think about something else. Hey guys, I'm looking for a 50 to 87 year old single Asian older female with money! With money! After checking out, I thought I'd take a quick look at the watch online to see if it looked quite so good in person. As we've seen in other videos before, often these stock images don't tell the whole story. I was amazed to discover not a single review of this AW50 in the English language. Why has nobody reviewed this watch? It's been around in some form or another for 30 years and it's from a well-known brand, so what's the catch? Well, the watch is here. I've been wearing it over the last couple of weeks. Let's find out together. It arrived in typical minimalist brawn packaging with tiny branding and a surprisingly robust plastic case. This leaves a better first impression than the previous boxes, but the packaging is still low on my list of importance when judging wristwatches. Plus, if you're spending more, the packaging probably going to be better anyway. Last time, the first thing I noticed was the misaligned second hand. Luckily, there wasn't a repeat here, as this model doesn't have one. Instead, I noticed the smaller profile of the watch compared to its brethren. This one is a unisex model and comes in with a mere 6.6mm thickness, 33.8mm diameter and 44.3mm lug to lug. As you might have guessed, this means they're better suited to smaller wrists or those looking for an undersized and understated look. Visually, this really suits my skinny 6.25 inch wrist and it sits very discreetly due to its flat profile. When combined with the angled lugs, it makes for a watch that slips under sleeves very easily. This could have ended up looking cartoonishly tiny, but I think the extended boxy lugs do make this more wearable than you might think in a modern environment. So for around 170 quid, what improvements are we getting? After all, this is significantly more than the previous models I looked at. Well, the first and most obvious change is printed right there on the dial. Indeed, these AW models are still made in Germany, or should I say, are made there once more. From what I can gather, these are effectively reissues which hit the market in 2017 following a decade of non-European watch production for the brand, during which time these analogue models disappeared from the market. With European production comes European labour costs and consequently lower specifications per your unit of currency, a theme we'll touch on later. This does effectively remove the possibility of stereotypical sweatshop labour, which is a controversial topic when discussing watches made in certain Far East regions. As a consumer, I've generally found that you can get slightly higher levels of quality control from factories in the likes of Germany compared to Chinese manufacturers, where it can be a bit more hit and miss depending on the brand. While it says made in Germany, I'd say that's a bit of a stretch. The heart of this watch is a Swiss Ronda 714 quartz movement. While this is a reasonable movement, anyone with a basic knowledge of geography will know it's not German made. Because Switzerland isn't German, is it? I'm assuming the rest of the watch is assembled and made in Germany, just be aware that the claim is at least stretching the truth. Because I don't know about you, but to me, I'd consider the movement a pretty integral part of the watch considering that's what powers it. Overall, the stainless steel construction here does feel better than on the other Chinese made models, and in the hands, it feels lightweight yet not cheap. You'll notice we have a matte finish throughout which perfectly matches the tone and texture of the dial, this gives the watch a very mechanical and urban look which has really grown on me. I find matte watches to be among the most adaptable out there and the design of this watch really takes that to the extreme. The simple shape and clean lines paired with the diminutive sizing and plain colorway make this probably the most versatile and unobtrusive watch I've encountered. You could easily wear this casually or for the most formal events and nobody would bat an eyelid. The only situation where you may encounter a problem is in the pool. With the snapback case and basic gasket, 
The AW50 only offers a measly three bar water resistance, rendering it splash proof at most and certainly not submergible. I will say it did take a fair amount of force to remove and reseat the case rear, but even so, I won't be taking this one swimming anytime soon. When designing these watches, Braun's designer Dieter Rams supposedly utilized his 10 principles of design, which I'll pop on the screen for you now. Some of these are evident in the AW50, while others aren't. This watch was initially released as a follow-up to the popular AW10 watch, and they took that minimalist design even further, using the principle that good design is as little design as possible. That's apparent here, as the Arabics are gone, as are the second hand and minute track. This gives a very clean look that could be construed as boring to some people. I'll let you be the judge of that one. Surprisingly, I think it does take a lot of thought and planning to nail the Bauhaus aesthetic as can be seen by the poor execution of many fashion watches such as Movement, which are equally as simple but look much, much worse in person. It seems like it's the little details that are the hardest ones to pull off. The fact that this piece was designed over a quarter of a century ago is a testament to how long-lasting good design can be. It still looks very modern, and unlike alternative brands, this piece even looks unique and attractive from the side. When you look closer, you'll notice that the date window is faceted and there's a red chevron to aid visibility. But other than that, the dial doesn't exude the sense of quality that you might expect when spending this much money on a wristwatch. The hands, while very legible, do look cheap and everything else is just inked onto the surface. Additionally, one of the design principles mentioned before involved making the product more useful. However, this watch features no luminescence, rendering it absolutely useless in the dark. That, paired with the lack of water resistance, highlights that these principles are likely somewhat of a gimmick when applied to wristwatches at least. That being said, some thought has clearly gone into other areas of the watch. The case itself feels durable and the crown is very grippy despite the small size. Furthermore, the watch is very comfortable, aided by the decent 18mm black leather strap. This is very flexible and doesn't crease very easily though, doesn't feature any sort of quick release system either. To be honest, in the long run, I have a gut feeling that you may suffer from the bottom layer of the strap peeling away, though that remains to be seen. Across the dial, Braun's gone with a flat piece of mineral crystal which is flush to the bezel. I think most of us would have preferred a piece of sapphire here, especially given the high retail price for a quartz watch, as this current material won't offer that high tier scratch resistance. In that same vein, I think this is a better watch than the Chinese made offerings, but however good the designers at Braun are, I don't think I could justify spending like 170 quid out of my own pockets on this. If this were more like £75, maybe £100 given the German assembly, it could be more recommendable as a fashion watch alternative. Unfortunately, when you're talking double that price, I'm unsure how far the nostalgic design and brand name can carry it. True, the looks of a watch are probably the most important factor as a watch collector. We've seen evidence of that with the poorly specced q Timex watches, which have been incredibly popular. If you love the look of this AW50, it's linked in the description. It's not a bad watch, just an expensive one on a material level. Though it will probably look good in another 10 to 15 years if that matters to you. Why has nobody covered this watch before then? Why is this what well, seems like the only uh, English review on YouTube that I could find? Well, I think it's because there's just not that much exciting stuff going on with Braun watches. When was the last time they released a fresh, original model? When was the last time that they made anything innovative as the first design principle suggests? I can't even remember, and that's your answer. If you're new here, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.